This screen cast introduces the innate immune response to viruses. The innate immune response is the body's first line of defense to pathogen invasion and is non-specific which allows for an immediate reaction. This occurs within 4 hours. Also, the innate immune response has no memory or adaptive mechanisms associated with it. The human body is equipped with many anatomical barriers which have evolved to inhibit pathogens such as viruses to gain entry. Some of these barriers include lysozymes in the saliva, stomach acid with a pH of 2, skin with a pH of 5.5, the respiratory system such as the lungs and the trachea also secrete mucus to stem off viral infection. Other barriers include airwax, cilia in the trachea, high salt levels in the sweat. However, if the barriers are breached, phagocytes such as macrophages or dendritic cells respond by engulfing the virus via phagocytosis. Viral pathogens have proteins bound on their capsid called PAMPs that are recognized by PROs found on toll-like receptors. Upon internalization, a signal transduction pathway will be initiated, ultimately leading to the production of NF-kappa-B or IRF transcription factors. These transcription factors enter the cell nucleus, where they activate the transcription of genes that are subsequently transcribed into cytokines. These cytokines are exocytosed from the cell. Macrophages produce various types of cytokines. IL-1 beta, ENF alpha, and IL-6. IL-1 beta is associated with the production of IL-6. ENF alpha is associated with induction of shock. IL-6 is associated with acute phase protein production. Each of these cytokines cause systemic effects such as fever. The other types of cytokines include CXCLA and IL-12. This leads to the inflammatory response which is caused by the release of cytokines. The inflammatory response manifests itself with symptoms such as redness, heat, pain and swelling. The inflammatory response can be subdivided into four main parts. The first is tissue damage. Suppose the virus gains entry through skin damage. This causes the innate immune response to recruit histamines via mast cells. Also recruited are prostaglandins and other cytokines such as IL-1, IL-8 and TNF-alpha. Secondly, vasodilation is facilitated by these chemical messengers, prostaglandins, leukotrienes and histamines. These allow for increased blood flow to the site of damage or infection. The third reaction is vessel permeability. This is mediated by the prostaglandins and leukotrienes, which allows fluid to leak from the vessels to the surrounding tissue. This fluid is rich in complement proteins, antibodies and blood clotting factors such as fibrinogen. Finally, an influx of phagocytes through the vessels occurs. They first aggregate along the vessel walls in a process known as margination before they squeeze through via diapodesis. Another important player which is essential to the innate immune system is the natural killer cell. Cells that are infected by the virus that are past the point of returning to their normal functioning state are dealt with by NK cells. NK cells produce perforins which as the name implies perforate the cell membrane of the infected cell. Also produced by NK cells are proteases called granzymes. These enter the infected cell and trigger a cascade of events which ultimately leads to programmed cell death, apoptosis. Complement, a key component of the innate response to viral infection, is a system of approximately 30 plasma proteins that activates a cascade of proteolytic reactions on a viral surface. Opsonization leads to viral aggregation where complement proteins adhere to viral capsids, causing them to cluster and preventing cell entry. Cell entry is also prevented by the viral coating of complement. Lysis of viral infected cells occurs when the virus has already entered the host cell to prevent maturation of the virus. Finally, C3A formed via the classical pathway and C5A cooperate to initiate the inflammatory response. And that's how the innate immune system deals with viruses.